Okay, continuing. I've been downloading using Pixabay resources. The last one was this funky mountain, right? All in purposefully in service of what I need for my sketch. I'm missing some of these foreground elements. I've got rocks, I've got background mountains, I've got funky trees, I've got funky cliffs. Now I want vegetation. Very helpful because it helps put uh, filler in between these different layers, kind of seams it together like expanding foaming glue, filling in the cracks. So this I can be a little bit more creative about. For instance, I don't need to search for the thing I'm looking for. I can search for other stuff that is weird and interesting texturally, especially if I look at my inspiration, right? This is funky, strange textures, exaggerated kind of jungle things. So what if I look for funky jungle plant close up bush pod. Now the reason you can do these really weird prompts in Pixabay is because all it's doing is giving you anything that has any one of those tags, right? That's why you get thousands, like 409,000 photos. Now, if I realize I don't need funky jungle, though some of those are really cool, I can see what's left. Like this is beautiful, this close-up image. So remember I need to open the link in a new tab, then I go to it, download it, second to the largest, because I don't want to have to log in, and that's a good size for doing it with freeware, with PhotoP, then I close. And I love these kind of seed pods. But I have to think of lighting as well, and I'd rather there is a group of them. I don't want to spend a lot of time compositing individual seed pods. I love the foliage, but I want it to be a more contained shape, and I want it all to be in focus. So sometimes foreground elements are the, the toughest to find because they're the things we're looking past. And sometimes I'll get it from food. You know, these pine cone kind of things. They can be really interesting. So you can think outside the box. In the morning class, I'm doing all things with like desserts. Because there's so much photography of desserts. I might do this whole pile like a bush, just rotate this, of flowers. And because I want to be efficient, and just get something knocked out because if I'm a con if I'm a concept artist, being fast and efficient is everything. Speed is the main thing you're paid for, and you only get fast by learning how to do it slow first. So the expression is, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So we're learning it as taking as long as it takes to learn it so that we can do it smoothly without a lot of hiccups. And as we do that, then we're able to be a lot faster, right, and more efficient. Slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. That's our goal. And then once I get to like a lot of kind of generic stuff, so I do like this house plant, then I'm done. Now I just download them. I've got plenty to work with. And if I need more, I know where to find it. But I've definitely got five. So as, as soon as you've got more than five, you're ready to go to the next step. Five or more. The next step is I'm going to move them all into my assignment one folder, into a new folder within that folder called reference images. Otherwise, it gets really confusing. I'm going to open up my downloads. And I'm going to move all of those downloads. There's a lot. Some of them I got doubles of. Accidentally downloaded twice. I'm going to move all of, ah, I hate that. It's a new operating system for Mac. To select multiple files. 
you have to ah, like a certain I always have a heavy hand there we go you have to have, to have a light touch with this trackpad so I'm moving them all into my reference images folder and then I'm going to do a step I neglected to do in the morning class and I regretted it that is, I'm going to curate my images. I'll make them a little bit bigger so you can see here, just in the video. So here are my images. Arrange them by name. Collapse the grid space so they can all fit. All right. Which ones am I most excited about using? I love these roots. That's a must big part of the character of the landscape. So that's going to be the bottom of my tree. Mark it green. Love it. Love the top of this tree. I'm going to use this as the top of this tree. Right? So I'm going to use it. Green. Background. Love this mountain and sky. Use it. What other things? Love this funky hill. I'm going to use it. Now foreground. What goes in front of this funky tree? Love these plants. Love the crystal. Love this. Maybe this. <laughs> just because I like the color. Maybe this, but probably not. Probably this. Why am I ne neglecting to use the clear crystal? Because things that are translucent should be reflecting and showing what's around it through it. That can be done in compositing, but that's a, a lot more difficult. It's like showing reflections in water, right? A lot more difficult than just stacking pictures together. And then what are some good filler images? These rocks, very useful, very useful. So then I have other things like these cool rocks, this far mountain, this sky is so cool. Got to use that. I don't know. So I've got a lot. Now, if I view it with just the tags, it will show me all those I marked green. And I still have, I have 12 images, right? But some of those are more consequential than others. So this is my next step. I'm going to open my sketch by opening Photo P. I can close all these. I can always go back to Pixabay and get more. I can also use my own photos, which I have in my Google Photos, linked on my Google account. And I did take some photos just on campus of these rocks and gravel that I thought might be useful. These are just by the library. So I'm just going to download those. So really, you can get pixels from any place as long as they're high enough quality. And then I'm going to open up. I can use the assignment to do it. But our freeware. So we've talked about Pixabay. Now I'm going to say new tab, command T, type in photo P. And I'm going to open up my sketch in Photo P. I'm showing you how to set it up. Please pay attention and try to follow. And if you already started it, try to follow along to make sure it meets the requirements. I'm going to drag my sketch into it. My sketch was done at the corner of my faculty meeting agenda. I don't need all this stuff. So what do I do? I'm going to use the rulers on the sides and use the move tool at the top and I'm going to click on the ruler and drag to get guides. These are just helpful guides. Click on the side ruler and drag until I draw a box around the sketch. If you have multiple sketches you want to find your best one. This is like the, the picture on the cover of the IKEA instructions. This is the vision you have for your landscape. It's the plan for how everything comes together. 
Then we're going to use, and it might be the first time we're using it, the one, two, three, four, fifth tool down, the crop tool. This is a dangerous tool because it gets rid of information. Right? So I always use guides first, and then I move the crop tool, the crop selection, to snap to those guides, and then hit return. Next, I'm going to make a new layer on top. And I can say that by saying layer, new layer. I'm going to make this full screen just to help with the video. So I can do it that way, or I can click on this little post-it looking symbol at the bottom of the layer window. That will also make a new layer. I usually do that because it's a little bit faster. On this new layer, I'm going to say edit, fill, and I'm going to choose gray as a color, 100% opacity. So now I have two layers. I have my sketch, and I have a gray shape on top of my sketch. I'm going to move the gray shape underneath my sketch. So there's still two layers there. At that point, I'm going to check its image size. So image, image size. And the minimum for this class is always has to be larger than 8 inches by 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch. Right now in inches, mine is 28 inches by 20 inches, but it's 72 pixels per inch. So if I uncheck resample and change this to 300, it shows me that my image is actually, without changing any pixels from the photograph I took of my sketch, is only 6 inches by 5 inches by 300. Not big enough. So I have to click resample to grow the pixels into the pixel uh, dimension I need. And I'm actually going to make it not 8 by 10, but bigger than that, 14 inches wide. So it's going to be 10.2 by 14 by 300 pixels per inch. Where did that 10.22 come from? It's because this aspect ratio of the, the box I cropped to, which is my sketch, is a certain height width ratio. That's called the aspect ratio. When you have this, this chain link checked, it preserves it. So if I put in 14, it will automatically change the height to match. This is larger than 8 by 10. It's at least 300 pixels per inch. I'm good to go. Agreed? And when I do that, it's going to make up pixels around each of the existing pixels, and it's going to soften my sketch a little bit. It doesn't matter. This is the IKEA direction. This isn't the project. This is the plan to get to the project. Okay, next, I'm going to get off the crop tool because it's dangerous. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is create a working space around my finished composite. If you think of it as an analog collage, this is my paper on my desk. I need the desk, right? So what do I do? I go to image canvas size. These are things we've done before, but this is just applying it in a different way. And I'm going to grow in inches around my, my image, my sketch. I'm actually going to make it 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall because my landscape is wider than it is tall. If yours is taller than it is wide, you would do 30 inches by 40 inches. Okay. Why 30 by 40 inches? That's actually a measurement I want you to know because 30 by 40 inches is the largest printing size, paper size for a professional offset lithography printing press. So the largest single sheet image you can print at full quality, commercial quality, whether it's a poster, uh, like a campaign for it, this, a bus ad, that kind of thing, is 30 by 40 inches. Anything bigger than that, like a billboard, if you're going to print it at the, the best quality, has to be piled together from multiple prints. So 30 by 40 is good to know. If you make any books, they're always going to fill a 30 by 40 inch plate with all of your different pages. If you make cards, they're going to fill it with hundreds of cards because to not use that full 30 by 40 inches is to waste a $2,000 printing press. Okay, now I've got all this extra space. It shows me the stuff that I cropped. Why did it do that? Because Unlike Photoshop, for whatever reason, Photo P, even when you crop, keeps the things in its memory, but that's where the gray comes in. So now with this gray layer, I'm just going to use 
uh, option 